My first guest is a great friend of mine and a colleague, and we have enjoyed the good life together. But now I suppose I ought to introduce him as the Prime Minister. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Right Honourable Paul Eddington. I don't need that now. I've You've changed, it. Terry. I have, yes. but it was a very quick operation. <laughs> I recommend it. Is that one of the Prime Minister's suits? No, 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 this is my own. Is it really? <laughs> no, I think it's a bit casual for the Prime Minister. I'd be a bit more formal. If, now I just want, now you're, now you're not to worry about this question, but I want the truth. If somebody came to yeah. you and said, now look, please, Paul, just, just for one year, please, please, would you be... PM of England, what would your answer be? Oh, oh, I think no, really. I mean, it'd be a very tempting, tempting offer. I find it awfully difficult to resist a challenge, but I, no, I don't think it, no. No, I'd hate all that. Would I you think. really? I mean, do you find, I mean, what I'd like to know all is... All that bowing where? and scraping, I couldn't bear it, and all that power, <laughs> dreadful. Is, who do you base James Hacker on? Me. Really? Seriously? Yes. <laughs> no, that's great. No, people, people sometimes have asked me, uh, do you based on this minister or that minister? But no, I thought, now, there's a person who's interested in politics, uh, knows nothing about administration. Uh, what would happen if he suddenly found himself in that position? And I think, well, what, what, that's me, you see. I'm interested in politics, but know nothing about administration. Then I'd have to rely on my civil servants and all that sort of thing. He's a lovely character. Do, oh, you, ever, do, you, do you get muddled um, with the character, with the, the, the politics that you believe in and the character? I mean, do you ever get to the point when you say, well, look, I don't, I don't really think that we can say this because... No, not really. There, there is... Uh, on one occasion, I felt that the author's impartiality was slipping a tiny little bit when they made a bit of mock of nuclear-free zones and things like that. Well, I'm a pacifist. I make no secret of the fact that I'm a supporter of CND and so on. And I said to them, look, this is going a bit far, isn't it? I, I don't mind saying this, but it doesn't sound quite as impartial as you usually are. And they did tone it down a tiny little bit. But on the whole, almost never, no, never do I do anything like that. I mean, it, the programme, you see, isn't about politics. It's about administration. Yes, it is. Um, have, you, have you ever been tempted to exploit the situations that, that James Hacker finds himself <laughs> in at all? Well, uh, in what way do you mean? You mean people ask me to behave as if yes, I were James yes. Hacker? Well, no, not really. The funny thing is that the, the, the person in the street uh, whom you'd expect to think of do, me do, as a politician... Do, do, they, do they come up to you and, say, and, and talk to you as if you are the actual... Prime Minister. Well, no, example. they don't. I rather expected, I quite hoped that they might do so and rush up to me and say, look, would you do something about the such and such bill? Uh, but they don't. Uh, the people who are really taken in are the politicians. The ministers. Really? <laughs> there is this, didn't you have to go to a, um, a rally or something in Australia? That's once? right, yes, yes. And, I, and talk as if you were actually a, a politician. Well, it's rather nice, you say. I get, I get all the fun without any of the responsibility. When I go to a foreign country, uh, they roll out the red carpet and lead me straight to the head of state, you see. Do they, and, uh, do they do that? <laughs> yes. And on this occasion, uh, I, was, I met a whole lot of ministers coming out of their first cabinet meeting in Canberra. And... Uh, I was introduced by, uh, by a friend of mine and said, you know the minister, don't you? And one of them said, uh, what is your portfolio? Under the impression, I suppose, that I was not just a minister, but actually probably an Australian minister. <laughs> so wherever I am, I'm a minister. Now, our real prime minister actually likes your show, doesn't you? There's some, there's, well, so she says, and who am I to disbelieve her? Don't, uh, don't, never do, yes. it would be dangerous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hasn't, hasn't she appeared with you, or haven't you appeared with her or something? Didn't, wasn't there a skit or yes, something? Yes, the whole thing's got a bit mixed up in most people's memories. And they well, think that she played... A, they think she actually played a part in one of the episodes. No, it wasn't like that. I was... Uh, ah. The whole show uh, once was, was given a war, an award by Mrs Whitehouse. I can't remember why now, I suppose for being the cleanest show on the air. <laughs> and uh, the night before we were going to be given this award, the head of comedy at the BBC rang me up at the theatre where I was appearing and said, you know this award tomorrow, uh, you know Mrs Thatcher wants to present it. I said, yes. Uh, she wants to play a small scene with you. I said, <coughs> you must be joking. No, he said, no, I'm on my way to number 10 now to pick up the script and I'll come and talk to you about it after. Of course, he said, you're free to refuse if you want to. When was this port? I, I didn't refuse when it came to it. Uh, when was this? Yes. Uh, well, about 18 months ago, a couple of years ago. Oh, right. mm. Was she very good? 
She was I mean, it acted. I mean, she's very She was good wonderful. She was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bit daunting, isn't she? I mean, I was yeah. once in the same yes. room with her, and I—it's yes. she's not Luckily, like an actor. Luckily, we had she an really audience is... who were very eager to to, to love. <laughs> <laughs> that's all very current. Now, the, that's what you're doing now, and it's yes. absolutely wonderful. And there's a new series coming in now, isn't there? Yes. But I want to show you something which is rather wonderful. It's you, not What's me. This? Don't get excited. But it is a wonderful thing. What you going to show? It's me? a very early clip. Now, think of that. Fine young gentleman, Pierre Bordeaux. He sings well, plays the guitar, <laughs> dances prettily, <laughs> and jolly good company for your old uncle. I know all that, Uncle. You don't have to throw him at me. Oh, oh you are a silly fool, Pierre. Pierre, my boy. How are you? I was just saying to uh, Mary here how well you played the guitar. Oh, yes, I know how well you play, Pierre, but sometimes you play too often. And the cold, cold English. Never play at all. <laughs> Look at the Master Cox there. All he does is make love to his apple. <laughs> that must have been painful, right? In his Cox's, Cox's orange pippin. Now listen, did you enjoy that? Because you sounded oh, so beautiful. I, I was the champion Bowman of France in that episode. This was a long, long time ago. But you didn't have 30 an years accent. Ago. You were. There was no <clears throat> I had a little. Uh, did you well, notice the accent? Uh, oh, no, uh, I was. Yes. I was so taken. Pierre, with the my way name you was. Looked. I was. And Pierre. I remember that episode particularly because we we used to shoot the bow and arrow, of course, a lot in that thing. You would, wouldn't you? And uh, any spare moments we'd got hanging around, we used to shoot the bow and arrows. We got quite clever at it. I was very good, but. <laughs> In that particular episode, I hadn't actually picked up a burn arrow for about six months. And for some reason, I got the arrow on the wrong side of the bow. Not in that clip you just short saw, but in another one. There was a close-up of me doing this. And as I shot it, the arrow went bang. And we took ages to film this bit, and the camera crew had got dustbin lids and all sorts of things. It took a whole day to do it. And the next day, I saw the rushes, and I thought, I've got the arrow on the wrong side of the boat. And this was shown all over the world to millions and millions of people. All Did you enjoy? Did you enjoy doing Robin Hood? Oh, I had a wonderful it was, time. It must have been a wonderful thing to do. Ride on horseback every day and Before you did Robin Hood, you started out, somebody told me a long time ago, as a window dresser yes, in, a, it gets in around, Birmingham. <laughs> is That's that right, is yes. that true? Yeah. I mean, it's, were you very, it's very absolutely young? True. That was my very first job, well, the only job. The pins, I was 16. It was the only job, apart from the theatre, that I've ever done. I wanted to be an artist, you see, very badly. Really? I do know. I didn't mm. know that. I mean, a lot of this is, of course. I was I brought up know. amongst painters and sculptors and things like that, and I thought it would be lovely to be an artist. And my grandfather was an artist, you see. And, and so I thought, well, I don't fancy starving in a garret very much. No. So it ought to be. It must be commercial in some way. I've got to make money at it. Do you, will, you, will you obviously make a lot of money now? Is it, is it wonderful having worked so incredibly well, actually, because you've been at the National and everywhere else? You've done everything. I've worked you've done, jolly hard. You, you do wonderful, wonderful things, and you're wonderful on the stage. Yeah. Is it wonderful now having, being able to do exactly you, what you want? Yes, it is. Wonderful. I mean, yes. you enjoy What it. I want at the moment is to do nothing, <laughs> and here I am what doing you, it. What are, you, what are you going to do after... after nothing. Nothing at all. Absolutely. I've retired. Oh, no, don't. That's no good at all, because you've got to come back and work with me on the stage. Oh, Paul, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs>